Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Uh, please pardon my voice, uh, I'm a bit sick today. I have been for like the past week, but today what we are going to be talking about is uh, how to make uh, a cloth simulation that you can actually run in real time. It doesn't take forever to render. And I feel like I've made a couple of these videos, but I feel like every time I find a better solution. And so right here, as you can see, I have this model which has uh, multiple simulations running at the same time as you can see I have the kind of like the skirt right here blowing in the wind these little uh, little bow tie sort of thing these feathers and her hair and um, if I go into edit mode you can see that there's quite a bit of vertices here like these are not um, you know just small well especially in the hair there's quite a few so this isn't just like you know a few polygons that, I, that I'm trying to move around. There's actually quite a few, and you can see it lags every once in a every once in now. Eh, I can't talk to him. Sorry, I'm kind of sick. Uh, it it lags every once in a while, but um, for the most part, you could actually I could actually animate this as it's running its simulation if I really wanted to. I don't know how I would end up doing that, but here you can see I, I can actually move the model and the uh, the simulation kind of moves with it. Here, I'll just move this part right here as you can see. Skirt still needs a little bit of working on as you can see. But um, right here in the third layer I have, this is basically what is controlling the uh, cloth simulation. I'm going to show you how I did this. So I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, delete the one for the hair. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to make a new one. So first of all, you want to add some sort of mesh and you want to surround um, the uh, the mesh that you want to have the simulation on uh, with the D4 mesh. I'm going to call this the D4 mesh and I'm going to call this the base mesh just so I don't get myself confused. So I'm going to hide everything. You don't have to hide everything else but I find it easier to work uh, with what you're working with uh, if you just hide everything else. So I also want to set this uh, bone layer to layer 2. I don't know why it's on layer 1. Uh, okay, hide this. There we go. Now we had, uh, we just have the hair and we need to get the cube. And I'll just kind of put it over the hair as best I can. And the uh, trick here is you want to try to completely surround the hair or the base mesh with the D4 mesh. So uh, sometimes it's a good idea to go into wireframe to see where you can pull vertices closer and where you can pull them farther apart. And then afterwards go into solid view and look where it's kind of peeking out. Because anywhere where the mesh is peeking out, uh, it will not uh, be affected uh, by the by the physics. I'm just going to add a few loop cuts here. Give me a little bit more to work with. I always start out with a very small amount of vertices. Then I slowly work up. So uh, you don't really need it to be exact. Uh, I believe if you get it closer to what the base mesh looks like, the better it will work in the end. Um, but honestly, I could just have like sort of like a cube around it and it would still work, I believe. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, uh, I've been sick for a little while, uh, but I've been wanting to make this this mini this video. There we go. So you don't want any little bits poking, like even right there, that little bit that's poking out. Uh, if I was to uh, just stop and set this up with the physics, that little bit would not be uh, controlled. There, there's a few vertices peeking out, and it would look uh, very strange. Okay, so we'll pull this out a little bit. Oh, I totally forgot about this about this back part. Okay, so this shouldn't take too long. I'm just kind of surrounding it, pulling things out, pushing them in, and it looks out like uh, the rest are just the ones that are kind of pushed into the middle. I'm gonna be making another loop cut everywhere else. Okay, I'm just gonna. There we go. Just because uh, I want this to be 
a little bit sort of uh what's the word i want this to have a few polygons but not too many so that it'll run quickly because the whole point of this is that it's going to be a replacement for the hair so you apply the physics to this rather than the hair so that it doesn't run super slowly <laughs> okay so uh i mean this isn't the best best one i've done so far uh, but it should work, and it should work just fine, actually. I'm just going to give it one last inspection, make sure there's nothing poking out. Uh, it looks good. So uh, now we will start to work with the uh, soft body physics. And this is what we're going to give the physics to this little cube thing to. As you can see, when you first apply soft body, uh, almost every object is going to have this like weird jiggle. And to uh, fix this, we're going to turn the default of the goal strength all the way up to 1. And we'll turn the minimum up to like 8 or 9. <laughs> and we <we'll> move <coughs> Sorry. So uh, we turn the uh, minimum up to like 8 or 9. Um, just so that it's not spinning, freaking out everywhere. Just so it's kind of confined to this area. And you can see now that it's not really moving at all. There we go, I accidentally moved it. And actually what I can do is uh, click, oh, I totally forgot to turn on the screencast keys, I'm sorry. Uh, when I click Control Shift Alt C, I can, uh, I get this little menu and I can set the 3D cursor, or I could set the origin to uh, 3D cursor. And so I'll just set the 3D cursor to the center. And I'll do that again. It's a long keyboard shortcut, but it's useful sometimes. There you go, now if I accidentally click Alt-G, or if I move this and I want to put it back to its original position, it will automatically be right here, fully encompassing the hair. Okay, so uh, now what we need to do is we need to create a new vertex group. So I'm just going to make a new one, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be called group, it doesn't matter what you call it because we're only going to have one. And then uh, I'm going to go into weight paint. And there's this cool feature in weight painting mode, uh, which is right here, weight gradient. And I would just drag from the top to the bottom until there's almost no blue left. You want the top to be very red and then kind of gradient down to uh, almost blue. And that will make it so that the, at least for this situation, you want the top of the hair not to jiggle very much. You want it to jiggle more as it gets farther down the length. So now, when I apply the vertex group, this object it should be should be working there we go now it's a uh, really jiggly for for hair so you can always turn up the uh, goal strength to nine I could turn up the stiffness now I, I tend not to turn up the stiffness because it makes it uh, j uh, jiggle like faster and it looks more like it's vibrating rather than jiggling and uh, dampening also helps so that it's not freaking out too much and i believe this is good enough this little bit so if we move it around you can see it moves around just fine now it's really jiggly but hopefully it'll be fine okay so now what we want to do is we want to select the hair which is right here and we'll go into let me just get rid of all this other stuff so it, it's still uh it's still paired to, to the armature, so the armature still controls the hair, which is nice. So we won't have to, you know, repair that. We could just put the mesh deform uh, modifier on top of it. And so, uh, come on with this. There we go. So even if this uh, hair had like bones in it, and you can move around the bones, you could also have this on top of it, uh, still deforming it. So you could have multiple. Uh, modifiers deforming at the same time, which is really nice. So now you want to select the uh, the deform mesh that you just made uh, in the mesh deform modifier in the object section right here. Uh, the precision is basically how precise you want it. I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, in this scenario, since this is such a low poly mesh that we're using, 
uh, we don't really need to turn this up at all and in fact if you turn it up uh, it can like if I turn this up to six it would take a lot uh, longer to uh, to bind and if I was to turn it, uh, last time when I turned it up to seven it actually crashed blender so these values uh, go up exponentially pretty high so I'll just leave it at five I'll click bind and uh, bind will basically just connect these two meshes we'll just give it a second and there we go it's done and so now I'll just hide this and as you can see oh I forgot to hide this as well and as you can see the hair is moving uh, like it should be so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unhide everything I, I want to just unhide this I can I just I control Z enough where I can just unhide there we go and so what I can do is I can select this uh, the deform mesh first and then the base mesh in here and then when I click control P I'll just set parent to object and then I'll hide it again and now I can move this around and since that cube is parented to this it moves around with the hair and so you can see it's really really floppy so you're gonna you're gonna want to mess around with the uh, soft body settings in the uh, physics tab um, but as you can see it's running pretty much in real time at about 25 frames uh, sometimes it drops to 20 um, but yeah I just wanted to show off this cool little trick to get uh, realistic sort of like physics without having to um, and what am I saying oh yeah without having having to uh, apply physics to this sort of high poly mesh that will really slow down your render and actually one more thing that I almost forgot is uh, I haven't really tested this out but I might as well try it right now which is oops wanted to add a UV sphere uh, you should be able to have uh, collisions now and obviously this is a, a very sort of low poly mesh on the outside so the physics aren't going to look really correct um, but it should work so oops, let's just, I just wanted to hide that and then right here we're going to apply collision and uh, let's try it with just the basic settings uh, it's lagging once I get in there and the problem with collisions sometimes is that they sort of suck in and so uh, I believe to fix this you need to turn down the inner inner collisions and your okay I need to there we go let me just unhide that cube again so I'm just gonna see if it's well there you go so I'll hide this cube again so hide it and when you see and if it looks like almost like there's a force field around the ball but you can see that it, it has collisions so uh, if you if you make the uh, modifier mesh close enough to the base mesh you can actually have a pretty realistic uh, you know sort of cloth physics uh, cloth physics object with collisions that you can actually uh, look at in real time because this is not pre-rendered as you can see this is all in real time uh, I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one peace out